Yesterday afternoon, I got an email from an employee of a family-owned restaurant here in Vegas. I got it. Let's try it and rate it 1 through 10. I spent $86.73. The email read, I'm an employee at Frankincense Pizzeria. It's really slow. We really can't afford rent. And we would love for you to come and try the food. The owner don't know you coming. It's a family-owned business and the food is delicious, but we don't have a marketer behind us. That's the only reason why we don't really get that much business. The owner reached out to another food creator and they tried to charge us $2,600 to do a food review. How much do you charge? Please let me know. Thank you. I didn't charge absolutely anything and I bought my own food. This taste test is to really see, is it only because of the marketing or is the food bad or is the service bad? I can tell you right now, the service is not bad at all. And let me tell you why. I called my order in and a person who took it was Frank, who happens to be the owner of the restaurant. Frank was so dope. He literally took his time. He was patient. I was literally looking at the menu while I was ordering it. So I was like, please be patient with me. He was like, bro, take your time. <laughs> I went in, I paid for my order with the cashier. He came from around the corner. He like 6'3", real tall dude. Came around the corner and was like, grab you a pop out of there. I was like, I don't drink pop. He was like, what about a Gatorade? Grab it. He had no idea who I was. He walked up to me. He was staring directly in my eyes. And he was like, what do you do? At first, I was like, what? He was like, what do you do? I got social anxiety, so I give in pretty easy in person. So I was like, I'm a food reviewer. I kind of whispered it. And he was like, what? I was like, I'm a food reviewer. He was like, oh, we got to talk. We had like a 10 minute conversation and I basically told him, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to be 100% real. If I don't like the food, I got to tell you, I'm not trying to be malicious. And he was like, I'm going to be real with you too. I need help. Yeah, 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 that hit me here. He said, the food is delicious. He has great reviews on Yelp. The only bad reviews is that he don't close the time it says that he closed on Google. The time it says he closed on Google is 1 a.m. He was like, I literally can't afford to open that late because we don't get that much business. Frank, if you're watching this, I'm going to be completely honest. You are an amazing man from what I saw. I appreciated your time and I appreciated your conversation. Let's try this food. Garlic knots, off rip. These look amazing. Boy. Mm -hmm. It's some red chili flakes on there that makes it spicy. I was not expecting that to be spicy. That is delicious. 9.2 out of 10. We starting high. Peach chutney wings. I ain't never had a peach flavored wing before. That's a delicious wing. It's sweet. It's salty. That's a 9 out of 10. One half of the classic Italian sub. This thing is huge. Frank. This is delicious. My all this food is so balanced so far. It's spicy. It's salty. 9.6 out of 10. I thought this was more food. He gave me a whole bag of ranch. I didn't even ask for that. That's good service. That just took me over the top. Mild wings, it look like homemade ranch too. I'm not a huge fan of the ranch. It's kind of bitter to me, but that wing, that wing is fire. I wish it was a little more spicy. For a mild, it has no spice at all. So for the wing, it gets an eight out of 10. The ranch gets like a six and a half out of 10. Lemon pepper sauce wings, that thing packed with flavor. I ain't gonna try the ranch again, because again, I'm not a huge fan. This is one of the best wings I've ever had. This is a 10. All American burger. I haven't even tried the fries yet. They all come with fries. The fries are like a two. I'm not a fan. It don't really taste like nothing. It looked like a good burger. It is a good burger. That's just a good classic high quality burger. 9.2 out of 10. Small classic white pizza. I like that. I like that a lot actually. It's really good. 8.9 out of 10. That is classic, delicious, thin crust pizza. Really garlicky, like super garlicky. Last but not least, a small classic pepperoni pizza. Them some huge pepperonis. Boy, I swear, this is why I started making videos like this. Cause places like this that don't nobody know of, this is a 9.8 out of 10. I'm a wholeheartedly agree with the employee here. Frank, from me to you, this is my opinion. There is no way you should be behind on rent or struggling to pay rent. It is marketing. That's 100% what I feel like. That food is delicious. The service is amazing. God is amazing. I'm always appreciative to be a vessel. I love trying places like this. This is one of them ones. <laughs> yeah, Frank. Yeah, Frank. I'm coming back and I'm shaking your hand. I don't even want nothing else. I just want a handshake. God bless you. Y'all be safe. Y'all have an amazing day. On today's episode of Ronnie's Pregnancy Cravings, she just hit 20 weeks. And that will usually be a celebratory thing. But not in this case, because now she's getting super, uber, uber specific about the things that she wants. So it's 1030. She sent me to the grocery store. She needs red rooster hot sauce. It can't be no other hot sauce. It got to be red rooster. She said if it's not red rooster, she's going to pretend I'm a rooster and she's going to make me sleep on the roof. The second specific thing is beef ramen noodles by Marsha. 
But I had to call her. Good thing I caught her because I almost screwed up because she said top ramen noodles in a red pack. But they got these off-brand top ramen noodles in the red pack, right? Now, if I would have got that, I would have had to sleep outside because what she really wanted was the OG Marishan ramen noodle pack. But even though that was her mistake, it was on her, it would have been on me. And I will admit, I cut her off before she can say anything else because I would have been in here all night. I completely took that last part back. Her and Carter called me with my sister on the phone and they demanded more snacks. If you don't believe me, I have video proof. You can't hear it, but you can see. Those are eyes of somebody demanding something. And she is not playing. Again, extra specific. She wanted Kit Kats, but she said they had to be the minis and it had to be an A count. She said don't get none else but the mini A count Kit Kats and a uh, thing of Izzy's. Izzy's is the sparkling drink and then the Kit Kats are right there. All I'm going to say is if you watch this whole series and you still go have a baby after this, it's on you. It's on you. You did it to yourself. We are currently in St. George, Utah, and we at Cracker Barrel. I got it. Let's try it and rate it 1 through 10. I just grabbed a bunch of items. We in St. George, Utah, in the real Utah, at the real Cracker Barrel. It was hot. And this is not mine, but I'm going to just show you what we got. This is not mine, but I'm going to show you what we got. Catfish and fried apples. Catfish, fried apples, and steak fries. I'm not going to lie, based on presentation, it ain't got a lick of seasoning. It's mm -hmm. like a potato. It's a potato? <laughs> Everybody got catfish. Fried catfish, fries, and mac and cheese. Oh, loaded fries. Loaded fries is bacon and cheese. And then I got a bunch of syrup, a bunch of butter. 100% maple syrup. It's warm, too. I got syrup. Oh, that's a cute bottle. Uh-huh. It's warm, too. It's glass. Oh, I like that. I do, too. And this is what I wanted to try. It's a pancake taco. I actually saw this on Instagram earlier, and it actually looked good. I'm surprised if the Cracker Barrel got it, but I want to try it. It's literally a pancake, an egg, and bacon. But the pancake is rolled like a taco. It's just folded. Ooh. I'm not a fan of that egg at all. That egg is really like plasticky. Personally, I'm not a fan. The flavor is there. The thought is there. I just don't like this egg. This is a two out of 10 for me. I'm a texture person. I do not like that texture at all. It's real like rubbery, like bouncy. Ooh. This bacon is good. I can see that pancake by itself being good. I really only got two things. This is a burger. That's how you know I'm hungry. I got pancakes and a burger. It's just bacon, cheese, and tomatoes with pickles on top. I never seen the pickles be on top of the bun. This is a good burger. I'm pleasantly surprised. The meat is juicy, it's seasoned, this bacon is thick. The cheese actually tastes like cheese. Oh yeah, I like that. It ain't the best burger I've ever had, but it's definitely not the worst. This is very surprisingly, and it's hot for me. 7.9 out of 10. I didn't think I was gonna give nothing over a five. Let alone almost an eight. I ain't mad. Last but not least, I got a strawberry lemonade. Utah is actually fun. I'm pleasantly surprised. That's my second time using that word. I appreciate every single birthday wish. My birthday is officially over and I'm officially 27 and I'm about to drink this strawberry lemonade. And hopefully this cap off my birthday week. Ooh, ooh. That's not for me. That is very sour. That's like lemon juice, two out of 10 personally. And I know a lot of people like this strawberry lemonade. I'm just not personally a fan. Or maybe I just got a bad batch because that is very sour. Thank you, Utah. God bless you, have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. This is one of those places I really pray that this food is delicious. I got it, let's try it, everybody wants to see it. The total for all this food was $90. One of the main reasons I'm really praying this food is good is that this customer service, amazing and on top of that they've been reaching out to me since january but just because i want this food to be good does not negate the fact that i will be completely honest i don't have no malicious intent and i don't mean no harm these are my opinions and if you want to try this food or any other food i try please be my guest god bless you i had my sister call my order in so they had no idea it was me but i was listening to the whole conversation chris is the person who answered the phone chris customer service was a 9.5 out of 10. he was patient he was kind he ran through the whole menu with no problem and the way he described his food made it sound so good so our conspiracy theory changes every day. Today it's a spicy Cuban, it's a spicy Cuban flatbread sandwich uh, that is delicious. It's got a uh, Guinness mustard on it. It's got fresh pickles, uh, Swiss cheese. It's got um, and everything comes with fries. Oh, awesome.
awesome. Well, yeah, let's do that too. <laughs> That's awesome. I've been meaning to come here for months, but God willingly, I've been really busy, but I'm finally here and I can't wait. I'm gonna show you everything I got and we're gonna try it and rate it one through 10. Free bird, which is the chicken sandwich. The side chick, which is teriyaki wings and homemade tortilla chips. Not tortilla chips, potato chips, my bad. Chicken and waffles. The brown paper bag, which is a hamburger. The conspiracy theory. And last but not least, a mushroom steak flatbread. I lied, we also got a churro. To think all of that food was $90, plus everything came with fries. Insane. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna try to hurry up. Brown paper bag burger. It's a regular burger with onion rings on top of it. I'm not a huge fan of that. It's a lot of lettuce, and that's the main thing I taste. And the best thing about it, in my eyes, is the bread. The bread is really high quality and really good. But the burger itself, I don't really taste much, and I just taste lettuce. Personally, I get that a 3 out of 10. The free bird is the chicken sandwich. That one is definitely better, but in my eyes, it's still lacking seasoning. But to me, I wish I had a little more salt. It does have a good spice at the end, but at first, I don't really taste much spice or salt. But what's saving it for me is a chicken and stick, and it's really high quality, and it's juicy. So for me, that gets a 6.7 out of 10. Next up is the teriyaki wings. Homemade potato chip. Mmm. Again, this is pretty good. It's just lacking flavor in my eyes. A little bit of salt in this whole thing would be in a high eight for me. But as he is, I'm at a 6.5 out of 10. This potato chip is really good. I just wish I had more salt. I love the crunch on it though. I do. Now this is what I'm most excited about. This is the conspiracy theory of the day. This needs to stay on the menu full time in my eyes. This is delicious. Now this is extremely seasoned and I like it. It's seasoned, these pickles are fresh. This pita is delicious. This is really high for me. 8.7 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Next is the mushroom steak pita. This is the best thing. This steak is beyond tender though. It's tender, it's juicy. I love this pita they use. And I love the addition of the fresh mushrooms. With a little more salt, this would be in a high nine for me. But as is, nine out of 10. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. I just found a bunch of sauces in the bag. I found a handful of sauces. Oh, it's a spicy honey sauce. I don't know what kind of sauce this is. A ranch, a syrup. Oh, let me, hold on. Let me try that one more time. I don't think the flavor should be contingent on the sauce, but if the sauce help, the sauce do help, and they put it in there for a reason. Mm -mm. I feel like the ranch needs salt too. Last but not least, I'm gonna do the chicken and waffles with this spicy honey. Ooh, there's honey everywhere now. Ooh. Ooh, that spicy honey is delicious. This is a beautiful waffle. Now that got flavor from the beginning to the end, from Aruda to the Tuda. I really like that spicy honey sauce. It's like floral, salty, sweet, spicy. And for the chicken itself, I'm gonna sound like a broken tape recorder because I wish I had a little more flavor. With the honey sauce, 8.7 out of 10. For sure. And to finish everything off, it's the churro. It's a churro. <laughs> That's cool. It's a salted caramel churro, but I don't really taste the salt or the caramel. It just tastes like a churro to me. It's pretty good. Six out of 10. Overall, in my opinion, I think this place has a really high potential. A little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder. And we talking about nines and above. And for those people that like to be literal, I wasn't meaning those exact seasonings. I just was saying seasonings and flavored in general. But just with the customer service alone, the attention to detail, them just moving into a new space. They used to be a food truck. Now they got a brick and mortar. And the passion and love I felt like they put into it, I think this place is going to be out the door really soon. And as always, I pray and I hope they reach their target audience. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Another one. And another one. They said, this is the best thing. You know, get it. They said, you're going to fight over this. You're going to want more. I'll tell you exactly what this is. This is everything that I ate at Disney. Ranked from my least favorite to my most favorite. We had 13 things. Disclaimer, these are my opinions and my personal taste buds. We may completely disagree on all of these takes, and that's completely fine. If you would like to try any of these snacks and make it all the pain, I would encourage you to do so. God bless you. Starting at number 13 is a frozen chocolate and peanut covered banana. To me, it was way too frozen. And then once it did thaw, the chocolate didn't really taste like much. And also, I thought the peanuts could have a lot more salt. I personally think it would have enhanced the flavor of the chocolate as well. Number
number 12, the elote. Only because I really think this was much more like a garlic butter corn than it was an elote. It was very heavy in garlic. It was very heavy in butter. I personally didn't taste much chili powder or cheese. It didn't taste bad. It just wasn't what I think of when I think of elote. Number 11, Tiana's Palace. I'll give this a benefit of the doubt because it just opened. I definitely wouldn't say this restaurant was bad. I appreciate the rendition that they took on New Orleans food. But to me personally, it didn't taste like authentic New Orleans food due to the spices and the consistency of the gumbo. I understood the direction it was going in and I think it's going to get better with time. Number 10, the turkey legs. This is completely personal because I'm not a huge fan of turkey legs anymore. I used to be a huge fan, but as of late, they become more of a hassle than a treat. The more I eat it, the drier it gets and the more I start to sweat. But with that being said, the flavor of Disneyland turkey legs are always consistently good. That's why it's this high on my list. Number nine, Jack Jack's Cookie by The Incredible Coaster. It's a deep dish cookie and personally, it's really sweet, but it has sea salt on it that balances it really well for me. That's why it's this high. Number eight, the Berea tacos. While for me personally, the meat was a little dry, it was so flavorful. And the consomme was pretty good in my eyes, especially considering the fact these are theme park burrito tacos. These were pretty hot for me. Number seven, the seasonal Oreo crusted churros with the Maleficent peanut butter dipping sauce. The churro was a churro, but the Oreo was salty, sweet. The Maleficent peanut butter dipping sauce was peanut buttery and creamy. The flavors balance well, even though I'm not a huge sweets person. I took a few bites of this. My wife finished the whole thing. Number six, popcorn. Yes, it's popcorn, but when you get this fresh and it's buttery and it's salty, it started getting addicting at one point. The only reason it's not in the top five for me because after a while with that much butter, my mouth gets really dry and with this much walking, it's not the greatest combination. Number five, the pickle. For those who've never had a Disney pickle, you're going to wonder why it's this high. I don't even know how to explain it. It's fresh. It's vinegary. I'm not even a huge pickle person. This is one of the best pickles I've ever had and the snap on it, oh, the snap on it was crazy. They also have a spicy version. May I say anymore? Number four, the Proton Punch from the Pim Test Kitchen. It's essentially a strawberry lemonade with strawberry filled pop and pearl. Delicious, sweet, tart, refreshing. It almost made top three for me, but the only thing that held it back was the syrup was a little thick for my personal liking. Everything else, delicious. Number three, the Buffalo Turkey Wings from Pim Test Kitchen. It's kind of confusing to order because on the menu it looks like regular wings, but they're actually turkey wings and they're covered in blue cheese and buffalo sauce. The blue cheese I'm a fan of, but I know that's an acquired taste. The buffalo sauce was really tangy and surprisingly pretty spicy. I like turkey wings better than turkey legs because they tend to be more juicy. And this was no exception. It was juicy, it was spicy, it was tangy. I was a fan. Number two, the pretzel garlic bread with the marinara sauce. This was delicious. Garlicky, cheesy. The marinara sauce balanced it perfectly. I wish it had some kind of meat element. Like pepperonis on this would send this over the top for me. This crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, number one, the Blue Bayou, which is the restaurant that you see from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. This entire restaurant was absolutely delicious in my opinion. The gumbo was good, even compared to the traditional gumbo I just had in New Orleans. Granted, it's a very hard restaurant to get reservations at, and it's pretty expensive. But for this to be a theme park restaurant and the food be this good and the experience be this dope, I'm not mad at it. It was worth it in my eyes, just like everything else in Disney. We had a ball. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Me and my family are in LA and my dad was craving a pastrami sandwich. He found this place called Roscoe's Famous Deli. I got it. Let's try it. Everybody wants to see For clear communication purposes, I said we was in LA, but Roscoe's is in Fullerton. Here's the address for anybody wondering. We got five sandwiches and we spent about $100. Alright, it's Roscoe's. I heard it. I heard it too. Okay, let's hurry up. That's what that sounded like. That sounded like hurry up. This is the corned beef sandwich. It was only like four or five people when I went in there, but granted, it is late. It's different. It's almost like a brisket more than it is corned beef. It's a little on the dry side for me, but the flavor is really good. This is a little above average for me. 6.8 out of 10. This is the pastrami sandwich. It's juicy, I will say that. Again, the meat don't taste like a traditional pastrami sandwich to me. If anything, I feel like this is more corned beef. That's because it is corned beef. They made a mistake and mixed up the bags, which I'm not tripping about. I just picked up on it immediately. Maybe they got the packages wrong, but this definitely tastes like corned beef to me. It is. Or maybe I'm tripping. Mm. It's good though. The mustard is really acidic. It's a little spicy. I like this cheese. The meat itself isn't that seasoned, but it is juicy. And again, I like this bread. This is a little higher than the pastrami sandwich for me. 7.5 out of 10. Granted, again, this might be an actual corned beef sandwich. But overall, that's not bad for a late night meal. I'm gonna go to sleep satisfied. Quick side note, we going to Disneyland soon. And if you see us, please speak. Only if you're comfortable, of course. I wanna be very clear, I don't mind at all. Yes, my social anxiety is definitely still there, but it's been getting a lot better. God is amazing. But now it really only presents itself in big crowds. So please do not crowd around me and my family. We there to enjoy the park like everybody else. I said all that to say, I appreciate every single one of y'all to actually pay attention to my social anxiety and be trying to be aware of it. But if you feel comfortable coming to say hi or giving us a high five or taking a picture with us, I'm more than happy to do that. Let's just have fun. God bless you. Bye. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe.
Today, me and my family were blessed enough to do one of the dopest things I've ever done. So dope, we brought a random man that we met today to tears. Let's talk about it. For the past three weeks, I've been trying to get an ice cream truck, buy off the entire thing, and just pass it out to kids. But I haven't found any ice cream truck that don't think I'm scamming. Not in Chicago, not in Detroit, not in Vegas, nowhere. They all think I'm either scamming or they just don't want no parts to even listen to what I gotta say. But we in Anaheim, California, and today while we was running errands, we saw a man with an ice cream cart. I walked up to him and I asked him if I can buy his whole ice cream cart and how much it would be. He said $800, but he only spoke Spanish. So I had my sister-in-law who's Dominican and speaks very fluent Spanish to translate everything for me. And that's how that went. Oh, where's that at? It's aquí en la Guanita. Are you okay to drive there with us? Si usted, si usted puede ir con ellos um, a la escuela. Sí. Dígale que si me voy a ir yo me lo voy a subir en, en mi ven el, el carrito y ellos me siguen. Okay, no. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Gracias. Ice cream. Ice cream. I want it. Well, this. Okay. You guys want any ice cream? Yeah. Ice cream for free. You guys want it? Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. How you doing? I don't know where that is. Look for it. Okay. Look for it. Yeah, how do you open this? This one licking. This is harder than it looks. Grab everything. Just grab everything. Whatever he wants with the rest of it, he can give away and charge for it. Whatever he wants to do with it. Uh, we're going to go back home now and we're going to do whatever you want. And then we're going to take it. Follow my heart. Tell me that he did a miracle because I didn't have to pay for my cars of my car. And he bought the cards to be able to pay. Now I'm going to be able to pay my cars of my car. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I say this, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I'm just thankful to be a part of his journey. I'm just thankful that I can do any of this. God is amazing. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. There's three different steak sandwiches in this bag. One worth $40, one worth $80, and one worth $200. In my opinion, which one is better? I got it. Let's try it and run it with the These sandwiches are from a place called Uno Katsu Sando. They just opened not too long ago, and these are their soft opening prices. We gonna start with the standard. This is forty dollars. To be transparent, when you purchase any of these, it come in a box with four slices this size. Every sandwich has the same toppings, so like this crust, this sauce, and the bread. This bread is authentic Japanese milk bread, and it's from Pullman's. Pullman's is right next door. But since the toppings are the same, we really focus on the quality of the meat. Mm. Again, just focusing on the quality of the meat. That's tender, it's flavorful. It's a little fatty, but it's not crazy fatty. If I was looking for a fancy lunch, that's probably the highest I would go. Because again, $40 for a sandwich is still up there. But in my opinion, that's pretty good. 7.8 out of 10. And by default, because that's the first one, that goes to number one. These rankings are subject to change throughout the taste test. Next up is the American for $80. To be honest, for a $40 difference, I can't really tell. Yes, the meat is tender and it is flavorful, but the first meat was too. And personally, I like the first one a little bit better. This one's not much fattier. I'm personally at a 7.5 out of 10. So American goes to number two. Especially for the extra $40, I'm okay with the first one. See, it started getting dark out of nowhere. Last but not least, the A5. You can already see by the appearance that this is much fattier. $200. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I've had A5 before, but I never get used to that texture. It's so soft. 
It's like meat butter. The crust on that steak really saved it for me because as a texture person, I don't like things that soft. And the other experiences I've had with A5 Wagyu, I wasn't a huge fan because it's super indulgent. And when I say super indulgent, I mean really rich, like almost like a super, super dark chocolate ice cream to where if I eat a lot of it, it get too much for me. But in this case, the sauce and the crust balance it extremely well for me. That on top of the quality of the meat itself, I have to get this an eight out of 10. So my order of what I personally like, A5 Wagyu goes first, standard goes second, American goes third. Now, in my opinion, is it worth $200? I don't think no steak sandwich is worth $200. <laughs> on a personal, just regular area that basis, I'm not spending $200 on a steak sandwich. Is it good? Yes. Is it the best flavor to me? Yes. Is it worth $200? No. When I say it's not worth it, I'm not talking about what the shop charges for. I'm talking about the price of the steak itself. Because in general, that's a very expensive piece of meat. I wouldn't be surprised if the shop gets little to no profit off of every A5 Wagyu sandwich that they sell. I'm just saying in general, I don't think any steak is worth that much, especially not to be on a sandwich, in my opinion. <laughs> Absolutely not. Again, $40 me, please. I'm okay with the $40 steak. That $40 steak was good enough. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. We are currently at Chick-fil-A and I got the new honey pepper pimento cheese spicy chicken sandwich. I got it. Let's try it and rate it to 10. This sandwich was $8. We are currently in Chicago and we taking a day off and I wasn't planning on doing this, but we was at Chick-fil-A anyway. So I was like, let me try it. But the curiosity killed the cat. So I really want to know. This is what it looked like. I think it's a regular spicy chicken sandwich with shredded cheese, pimento. What's pimento cheese? Pimento cheese is like a cheese spread. Is that the one with all of them little dots, them different speckles? And it's honey, apparently. Mm -mm. The sweetness from the honey and the saltiness from the spicy chicken sandwich didn't balance well for me. That first bite was kind of off-putting. I want to add more context of why I use the adjective as harsh as off-putting. To me, it was also the textures on top of the flavors not really balancing. And when I say textures, I'm specifically referring to the spread itself. The consistency of the spread was on a looser side of the spectrum. The cheese was unmelted and sitting on top. And the peppers, to me, were cut big and a little mushy. That on top of the breading from the spicy chicken sandwich was off-putting to me. So I want to be very clear and concise about my wording. But not everybody would have that same experience because I'm a texture person. So it's very specific to my taste buds. Hold on, let me go on the bite. Nah, I can pass on that. I'm personally not a fan. That tastes real experimental. I'm not the target audience. That's like a three out of 10 for me. I can see some people eating that and really liking it. It's just not my personal fix. Also, I got that new shake. This is the cookie crumble. Is that what it's called? The cookie caramel crumble. Cookie caramel crumble. Cookie caramel crumble. Cookie caramel crumble. Uh oh, uh, down. That's a tongue twister. I got it with the actual syrup and the cookie crumbles on top. That's also not for me. That is really sweet. Ooh, that's way too sweet. Again, not the target audience. For me personally, that's like a one out of 10. Just those two sips that I took, I'm about to be hyper. Look, my hand's shaking already. <laughs> I also don't really taste anything but the sugar. It don't taste like Oreo, it tastes like birthday cake. Is it super sweet? Yes, and I what, like sweet stuff. What'd you rate it? A three. But if you wanna try it, as always, I encourage everybody to go make their own opinion. God bless you, have an amazing day, y'all be safe. If this one little stop at Chick-fil-A was any indication of the love that Chicago got for us, boy, this got crazy. People was pulling over, honking in the middle of the street, stopping in the middle of traffic. All of the Chick-fil-A people came out and took a picture with me. What are we doing? <laughs> I'm forever grateful and thankful, but it'd be shocking me. It'd be catching me off guard. Me and my family was riding around Chicago looking for food, and we got this message. You can pause to read if you would like to. I got it, let's try it, and rate it one to 10. We spent $121.15. As the message said, the name of this place is Cleo Southern Cuisine. The customer service, my sister said, was really good. As always, I sat in the car and I let my sister go get the food, so they had no idea I was coming. It was about three customers inside, and it took us an hour to get this food. When the lady handed over her bag, she said, hold the bottom, be careful, it's a lot of love in there. I'm gonna show you everything I got, and we are gonna try it, and rate it one to 10. Grape Kool-Aid, sweet tea, homemade honey cornbread muffins, butter and herbs, Scottish salmon with rice and a cornbread muffin, pineapple, candy, sweet potatoes, a side of mac and cheese, catfish and grits, the float and fly, which is chicken wings and catfish, a side of spicy bourbon sauce. We also got double each side. Last but not least, a side of remoulade sauce. If I'm saying that wrong, please forgive me. I tried. For the price, I'm not mad at these portions. It looked like a lot of food. I just pray this food is good. I'm gonna try the salmon first. Try it by itself without no sauce. Mmm, that's fresh, it's light. It's really refreshing, actually. It breaks up the monotony of the rest of the fried food I've been eating. I said it right before I get into this honey cornbread muffin. It's all glazed up. Like a honey bun. For real. <laughs> like a cake. It don't even look like a cornbread. It's 
it's like super <laughs> it's like super salted for some reason it's sweet it's buttery but it's also really salty it still tastes like a cake it's like a salty cake almost mm. mm-hmm Somebody like they use salted butter. Yeah, there's like a lot of salted butter too. I ain't mad at that though. It's good. I ain't mad at it. It's different. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, Cleo. Yeah. Cleo was her grandma. She in there. She had a big picture of her when you first walked in with a white fur coat on and a hat. <laughs> Jay said she looked like a Detroit player. Grandma, knew, <laughs> grandma was that girl. The salmon is very fresh and in season. The rice is cooked well. I like that cornbread. It's different, but it's good. That whole plate for me gets an 8.7 out of 10. This is the chicken and the catfish. You gotta have sauce, sauce. on the catfish. Because this is normally what comes on the catfish. Let's see. Ooh. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I can't even put no pressure on it. This catfish falling apart. when we was in New Orleans, I had the best catfish that I've ever had. This replaces that. This might be a 10. You make me catfish Girl, this might be a 10. It's close. It is very close is if it's not sauce? a 10. It's what not even both? a sauce. The seasoners on the actual braiding are so oh, good. It. And it's seasoning. buttery, it's flaky, oh, it's yeah. seasoned. I can't even grab it. It's like falling apart. Thick it's it's like thick and seasoned. I'm going 10. I'm I going 10. That. I'm going 10. Confidently. They ain't even had no hot sauce. Oh, they don't need no hot sauce. It's spicy from this Remoulade sauce, too. For so sure, you're right on. You're right on for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think they got the first reverse for sure. You're right on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say you straight. Got you talking in tongue. <laughs> I wait in an hour line for that. I wait two hours for that. This is the chicken wing. I'm going to do it with this barbecue sauce. We saw a man in there eating it, and it looked like he had it drenched just like that. So, Good God almighty. <laughs> that season is crispy it's juicy big pieces of chicken that's one thing i'm learning about chicago y'all do big chicken that's a big piece of chicken it ain't no wing dings these are the whole wings that chicken for me is a 9.2 out of 10. it's the mac and cheese mm -mm. the cheese is pretty chunky it's almost like a cheese curd it almost tastes like the cheese sauce broke i'm not a huge fan of this the flavor is good but this texture i'm a texture person i can't get over two out of ten for me Put that catfish in bowl by itself. And I don't need no size. It's the pineapple candy sweet potato. Yes, Lord. The pineapple do something real good for it. It's a bunch of spices and a bunch of sugar, but that pineapple cut through all of it makes it very refreshing for me. This with a piece of that chicken? Or a piece of that catfish? On top. Girl, who are you Get talking that catfish. Who are you talking to? Let me see. Oh, we. Yeah, that's right. They need to put that on the menu. That comes over together. Sweet potatoes by themselves are 9 out of 10 for me. That's high for you for some that's sweet. Really high. I won't be trying to drink because I don't drink sugary drinks like that. But this food, I see why people call this the best soul food in Chicago. To be fair, I haven't tried many soul food spots in Chicago. But just off of tasting this, I feel like that's going to be hard to beat. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Ed, I need a nap. I'm sweating. The video you're watching right now may be the beginning of a war in Chicago, but I don't mean no harm. There's three prominent chicken spots here in Chicago, Harold's, Uncle Remus, and Sharks. I got a classic four piece chicken from all of them. I genuinely want to see what's my favorite. Keyword, my favorite. Before you come in the comments and tell me I'm wrong, I can't be wrong about my opinion. This is what I personally like. And let's be honest, ain't no right list here. No matter how I order it, somebody gonna be upset. I got it, let's try it and rate it one through 10. I say war because everybody in Chicago got a specific chicken spot that they go to and they arrive and they about it and i ain't trying to do neither of them i just want to try the chicken first up we got uncle remus for ten dollars and 68 cents and it's sauced up if you ask me mm. this mild sauce in particular is very tangy i don't taste no spice at all the chicken is crispy it's a little fatty on the inside good size chicken wings it's still got a little bit of feather on the outside 
I ain't mad at that. This is a good starting point. It's tangy, it's crispy, it's juicy. For me, that's a 7.5 out of 10. I forgot to mention, there were a few cons that influenced my 7.5 rate. The grease that the chicken was cooked in had a very strong flavor, and the seasonings on the actual crust itself of the chicken was not that strong for me. So by default, since I tried this first, this goes to number one. This ranking is subject to change throughout the review. We get extra lemon pepper, because I know that's, that's the main thing. Know, we don't see it. Oh, I see it. Next up is sharks. This has a lot of lemon pepper on it. That white stuff you see is lemon pepper. This was $9.16. And before you comment, we got a side of mild sauce. <laughs> I don't know, this is hot, hot. I'm a fan of this lemon pepper and this chicken is really crispy. This mild sauce is a lot sweeter. You was right. It's still take it because it's mild sauce, but compared to Uncle Remus, it's a lot sweeter. Sharks is fresher, even though we've taken takeout for all of these places and we're sitting right in front of them. So we eat them as fresh as they give it to us. Past that, the flavor and the crispiness, this is an 8.6 out of 10 for me. So right now, Sharks goes to one, Uncle Remus goes to two. Last but not least is Harold's for $10. I will say Harold's took the longest. This took about 10 to 15 minutes to come out. Sharks took about five to six minutes and Uncle Remus already had that food done. So by the time she ordered, it was already in her hand. So a minute and a half. I feel like Uncle Remus was sitting under heater. Sharks came straight out the grease and they dropped this as soon as we walked in. So this is made to order. We also got a four piece for Harold's come with white bread and it come with coleslaw. But by the looks of this coleslaw, I'm not a fan and I'm not even gonna try it just to show you what I'm talking about. Harold's is definitely the crispiest. The chicken itself is the most seasoned. I like the sauce. It's like a mixture of the sharks and the Uncle Remus because it's not super sweet like sharks, but it's also not super tangy like Uncle Remus. It's right in the middle. Now for transparency, I did try the Uncle Remus and the Harold's sauce, but I tried it in bottles when I was in Vegas because I get the Uncle Remus sauce itself 8.5 and the Harold's a 6. But today on the chicken, it tastes a lot different to me. Maybe because I'm in Chicago and I got it from the actual places. I would get a sauce from Harold's like a 7.5 and I would get a sauce from Uncle Remus a 7.6. It's a little bit better, but the chicken from Harold's is a lot better in my opinion. So I know I'm having a lot of people disagree, but I firmly stand on my list. This for me is an 8.9 out of 10. So my official list of what I like the most goes Harold's, Sharks, Uncle Remus. I'm leaving Chicago soon, so y'all can fight with each other. I'm gonna be gone. But my time to start parking, I'm out. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. I don't want no smoke. Do not walk up to me talking about Uncle Harold's or Remus or Sharks. I'm just trying food. I'm an innocent bystander. Welcome to the hood. I am not from around here, but I stay down here. I kept hearing about this hibachi food truck, Hood Bachi, so I stopped and checked them out. I pulled up on them at their home base in the hood on Finkel and Chapel. I got it. Let's try it and rate it 1 through 10. Hood Bachi is in bright mode. When they say Hood Bachi, Hood should be capital. I got a steak bowl with rice. I've already started eating it because I'm sitting here with my family. It's a little yum yum sauce. Like I said, I've already been eating this. I already took a bite out of it. They already be booming. That's the only reason I didn't do a full dedicated video. On further inspection, this may still fall in the hidden gems category. It might just be super popular among locals because I found their TikTok and this is their follower account right now. But at the same time, they might just be new on TikTok because this is their IG follower account. I don't know. This might be a word of mouth kind of place. All I do know is I went with no intention on shooting a food review. I was just going with my family just to eat food because I heard it was good. But this food was way too good to not record. I feel like I was doing myself and everybody else a disservice by not showing y'all this food. I just had to turn the camera on. This is delicious. I ain't gonna lie. It's a local business. It's in the hood. They already got the marketing behind them, but more marketing can't hurt because I feel like they should franchise. This food is too good to be in a food truck, in my opinion. The fact they're not in a brick and mortar is crazy to me. It's seasoned. It's creamy. The customer service is amazing. It's a little different because they recognize me immediately, but I genuinely feel like these are genuinely good people. I was so busy eating. I ain't even rated. 9.3 out of 10. I'm smashing. They snapped. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. I see why everybody be over here. It's in the hood, though. Results may vary. Come on your own terms. It's in the hood. Be careful. There's a new black owned food hall here in Detroit. During the grand opening, there were no news or media outlets here. Even though this is the first food hall in the middle of Detroit, I'm here right now and there's nine restaurants inside this food hall. 
I got the most popular item from each one. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one through ten. In total, we spent four thousand two hundred and twenty-one dollars and forty-four cents. The name of this is What You Want to Eat Food Hall. This in Detroit, and when I say in Detroit, this on Six Mile. As always, to maintain the integrity of the food review, I had my sister go grab everything from me. So none of these restaurants even know I'm here. I haven't stepped foot out this car. I got one thing from each restaurant. I'm gonna show you what I got, and we're gonna try it and rate it one through ten. The first thing we got is deep dish apple pie waffle bites from Life is Sweets. This was ten dollars. Waffle bites, ice cream, caramel. I know starting with dessert is crazy, but I don't want this ice cream to melt. This ice cream is super high quality. This waffle is fluffy. It's some saltiness from the caramel. We starting high, 8.5 out of 10. Next up is Poon Sabachi Grill. We got a steak, rice, and chicken bowl for $30.86. It is a big portion. Like this is my hand for scale. It didn't come with any sauces, but from the looks of it, it looks like it's already pre-sauced. Some rice, some eggs, some onions, some steak, some chicken. Ooh, some seasonings. Mm. I think this needs a sauce on the side. Preferably for me, a spicy sauce. Not super spicy, but like just a little kick. I forgot to rate it. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is a rib plate with mac and cheese and baked beans from Detroit Wild Pit. This was $21.19. Start with the ribs first. I ain't mad at that at all. Hey. Not only am I not mad at that, that's a for sure you're right. For me, this is an 8.9 out of 10 baked beans. Hot. Ooh, that's real savory for a baked bean. I feel like baked beans are usually like either really sweet or really salty, but that's very savory. And there's really big cuts of vegetables in here. It's different. It's pineapple in here too. I need some pineapple. Okay, I don't really like the pineapple with the baked beans personally, but I can see this being somebody's cup of tea. Just not mine personally. For me, five out of 10. This is the mac and cheese. Oh yeah. Only thing is that the cheese sauce is inconsistent. Some of it has a lot of cheese sauce and some of it don't got cheese sauce at all. And the cheese sauce is the best part. That's where all of the seasoning is in my eyes. Oh, if this cheese sauce was spread evenly over this whole thing, this would be in the nines for me. But as is, eight out of 10. That cheese sauce is a for sure you're right on. Next up is a chicken and waffle sandwich with loaded potatoes from Heavenly Waffles. This plate was $25. First, you're gonna do the loaded potatoes. It looks like they diced them, but they real soft. Mm -mm. They are as just as soft as they look, so it's kind of like a mashed potato, but it's really like a chunky mashed potato. It does have flavor, but it's very garlic heavy. The only thing I'm really tasting is now if it was a loaded garlic mashed potato, then I wouldn't be mad. But for a breakfast potato, I'm not a huge fan of that. This is the chicken and waffle sandwich. It's a piece of chicken back here. I'm not a huge fan of that. Those waffles are a little too soft for me to be a sandwich. Like the waffles by themselves would be really good because they are soft and pillowy. But I think when you put a lot of toppings, it kind of makes it mushy and I'm a texture person. Again, Russian and I forgot to rate it. This is a little above average for me. This is a six out of 10. Next up is a jerk salmon bowl from Tickle Your Belly for $23.32. That's what we're looking like. They did that salty, spicy, saucy, delicious. I like this a lot. 8.9 out of 10. Next up is three fried tacos from Borderline for $15.99. But I do like the crushiness from the taco and I like the seasonings on the chicken. I also forgot to rate this. This is a seven out of 10 for me. We coming to an end. We only got a few more spots. Next up is a wing box from Wing Fellas. This was $20.92, but they didn't say which flavors they got. They just gave me wings. It came with some fries too. So I'm gonna just try the wings by itself. I'm assuming it's like a sweet chili or like a sweet heat. In Detroit, they do wing dings, and this is spicy. I'm trying to talk, but woo wee. Woo wee. They got a good flavor, but is that spicy? And before the people come who had this before, it was like, it's not that spicy to me. Everybody's spice tolerance is different. I like spice, but I don't like that much spice. I'm assuming it's some kind of barbecue garlic parmesan. Mm. Wait, that's an overload of flavors. It's good, but it's a lot, and it's really salty. Garlic Parmesan don't come to play. I like the idea of both of them, and I can see both of them having a target audience. I'm just not that target audience. For me, four out of ten. And this is a Green Goblin from Your Perfect Blend for eight dollars. Just something about a little cold green smoothie with some fruit in it. Fresh ingredients, cold. It's a smoothie, and it's delicious to me. Eight out of 10. Some people might like green smoothies, some people might not. I love green smoothies personally. Last but not least, we got three burgers from Crazy Gourmet Burger for $69.69. So about $20 a burger. I specifically asked for the most popular item from each place, but I was told the guy at the counter couldn't pick through these three. All three of these are the most popular. We got the Seven Mile Burger, we got the School Crab Burger, and they marked this as the SW Burger. This is like a cheeseburger with mozzarella sticks on it. Mm. 
That is a good burger. This is a seven mile burger. This is like a double burger with a fried egg and a bunch of sauce. It's so much sauce. This bottom bread is soggy. Last but not least, the school crab burger. I'm not sure what this is, but y'all tell me. It's a salmon burger and it's delicious. This is my favorite one. First burger with the mozzarella sticks. It was seasoned. The mozzarella sticks was crispy. It was cheesy. I like that. Eight out of 10. The second burger with the fried egg was a little too much for me. It was a bunch of sauce. It was two patties and it was a fried egg. I know that has a target audience. I know a lot of people would like that. For a lot of people, that'd probably be a nine to a nine and a half. For me, the flavors were a little overwhelming. Five out of 10. Last but not least, the salmon burger. It was a little spicy. It was seasoned. That salmon tastes super fresh. I'm a big fan of that one. That's my highest rating of the day. 9.2 out of 10. In my opinion, what you want to eat for all should be national news. Keith, I added up every total of the things that you said, and none of that added up to $4,221.44. That's because after I ate, we went to the bank and we put out $4,000 and we tipped every restaurant $200 and left $200 in line for anybody to come get food at every restaurant. We overshot about one. We thought it was 10 restaurants. So 10 restaurants times four, that's 4,000. And the rest of the food was $221.44. I don't even think I understand how iconic it is to be in the middle of Detroit with all these black owned businesses and all these people in here eating and enjoying each other i'm just happy i came and if you plan on coming in my eyes i will come soon if it's in god's plan i feel like every spot in there about to be booming lying out the door god bless you have an amazing day y'all be safe i'm in detroit with my family and i got this message from this food truck I got it, let's try it, and rate it one to 10. We spent about $30. We pulled up and it's on Michigan Ave in Eugene. But the customer service, fired. I had my sister order on the phone under an alias, so they had no idea who he was. But when we pulled up, my sister got out. Again, they didn't recognize my sister, but the first thing they said was this food been sitting here for a minute, so we gonna remake everything. I love customer service like that. Customer service for me, 9.5 out of 10. I'm gonna show you everything I got, and we gonna try it and rate it one to 10. A steak crunch wrap supreme with hot Cheetos on the side. They said you can get the hot Cheetos on it or on the side, it's optional. Three burrito turbos, three burrito tacos, two consommes, and he threw in three turbo sauces. This is the house made sauce that they known for. This is the crunch wrap supreme. The turbo sauce, like I said, is a house made sauce. And they put it on everything and it's shredded steak. They asked me if I wanted the hot Cheetos on it, I put it on the side just to be safe. I want to see what the actual crunch wrap hitting on first. Tuck them to the side. Mmm, -hmm. they don't even need the hot Cheetos. I'm gonna try it just in case. Me personally, I don't eat hot Cheetos, so the hot Cheetos I can do without. But this is spicy, it's creamy, it's crunchy. That meat is seasoned to perfection in my eyes. This is really hot for me. This is a 9.1 out of 10. We starting up here. <laughs> you know, I got my wife with me as always. Mm. Keep him. That's fire, ain't it? I'm going 10. What would you do to fix it? It's super spicy. I would want a little more sauce and I would want a little more vegetables. A few more peppers to balance the flavor and a little more salt and less spice. And I feel like we had a 10. It's, it's good though, ain't it? Mm hmm. That's <laughs> <laughs> fire. Ooh, with the consomme. With the consomme. I'm tripping. Look, you see that? <laughs> you know, I almost ate the whole thing. There go the salty element I was looking for. What's the cost made? It's a 9.7 out of 10. Ooh, mm. we. Mm. Mm-hmm. You taste it immediately. Mm-hmm. This cost make all kind of flavor in it. Mm. <laughs> These are the Berea Turbos. I think the Berea Turbos are Berea Tacos, but with the turbo sauce on it. Or actually, these might be the Berea Tacos. These are the Berea Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones are the Bria Turbos with the turbo sauce on it. I ain't about to play with these. I'm putting these right into the consomme. When we put up, it was a few people there. Maybe it's the area, but to me, out the dough. I only had one thing so far. Out the dough. It's better. Good God Almighty. The spot food truck is the spot. 9.5 out of 10. I'll go down to the other one was a 10 for me. This one I'll go nine. Crispy, cheesy, flavorful. The spot is the spot. They got it. Last but not least, these are the turbos. I'm gonna try it with the turbo sauce. 
Ooh, that's like a spicy Thousand Island. They don't hold back on the spices at all. Mm. I ain't mad at it. I'm scared. Hey. Mm. The spice that I can't even talk. <laughs> the sauce did it. Mm -hmm, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, they got it. Nine point five out of ten. Okay, Detroit. We starting high. I'm gonna say to the spot. I'm appreciative. I'm grateful. Thank you for the invite. That food, crazy. If the line ain't always busy, like maybe we came on a slow day. If the line ain't always busy. I pray and I hope after this, that changes. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Another one. Another one. We had a nighttime flight to Detroit, which means we got here pretty late. So what that mean? I DoorDash Coney Island. I got it. Let's try it at Ready Weather 10. For the people who aren't from Detroit, Coney Island is a staple. There's a bunch of different Coney Islands, so I kind of equate it to like a bodega in New York. Again, I had to DoorDash this because it's late. I wouldn't go into no Coney Island this late. I got kids. <laughs> Before the Coney Island war start, I'm gonna go to a bunch of Coney Islands while I'm here. This was the closest one to me and it was the only one that was open right now. Before y'all start. <laughs> I don't know smoke. I spent $60.21. I'm gonna show you everything I got and we are gonna try it and rate it with the tea. Chili cheese fries, a Greek chicken salad, two grilled chicken pitas, and a corned beef sandwich. As you can see, the corned beef sandwich I ordered came as a hamburger. Again, it's late. I ain't even mad. We're gonna start with the grilled chicken pita. It did not look like this on the pictures at all. Just off of looks, it's a lot more pita than it is toppings. Off of experience, I know this isn't the best chicken pita I'm gonna get, but it's pretty good. It is a lot of flavor, but it's a lot more pita than it is toppings for me. I'm a little above average. This is a 6.5 out of 10 for me. Next up, chili cheese fries. I remember chili cheese fries being with this crinkle cut. I know each coney do it different, but. I'm very particular when it comes to fries. I'm even more particular when it comes to chili cheese fries. And it's not my personal favorite. The fries itself aren't seasoned and I'm not really a huge fan of this chili. Personally, I'm at a three out of 10. Last but not least, the Greek salad. I'm not gonna try the burger because I didn't order the burger. And also, it don't look that appetizing to me. And again, I ain't ate all day, so I really wanna eat things I think I'm gonna like. Mm. To me, don't nothing really taste fresh, but the chicken is really seasoned. That's not the worst salad I've ever had, but it's not the best. I mean, personally, that's average. Five out of 10. It's what you expect for late night takeout. It's not bad, but I'm just excited to be home. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I'm taking this grilled chicken pita with this sauce. And tomorrow, we everywhere. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Mm-hmm.